Websites, hey, we've seen plenty of them. They're all over the place. Some of them contain information that's correct. Some of them contain information that's false. It's wrong. And that brings us to this week's story. It involves a man who lived in Oklahoma. He had had a business relationship with another man. Ah, it didn't go real well. Broke up. The other guy leaves. The guy remains in Oklahoma. And suddenly he sees that his ex-partner is posting things on a website that he says, that is an absolute lie and it's making me look really bad. Well, he sued him in federal court in Oklahoma. And the man who was sued was living outside Oklahoma. Well, he said, you can't sue me in Oklahoma. There's no jurisdiction here. Remember, we've talked about this in some of our prior blogs. Jurisdiction, a state only has jurisdiction based upon the geographic territory in which it sits, whether it's a state court, federal court, or whatever. And he is saying, I'm living outside Oklahoma. You have no jurisdiction over me, and therefore you can't sue me. Court listened to that argument and said, well, let's take a look and see what was going on here. Well, let's look at those comments. They were posted to a website that was maintained outside Oklahoma. Hmm. The website was not directed to people in Oklahoma. It was directed to whoever wanted to take a look at it. And it wasn't dealing with the kind of business that you guys were previously involved in. It was just a website that was making various comments. Hmm. Well, since it wasn't directed to Oklahoma, and since it wasn't directed to the business you guys were involved in, we find that there isn't any jurisdiction here because you live outside Oklahoma and you weren't doing anything to affect people in Oklahoma. Guy on the other side argued, well, wait a second, it's the World Wide Web. People all over the world can look at this. And they can look at this and they can realize I look like a bum because of what I consider to be false statements. Court said, well, that's an interesting argument, but because it wasn't directed to people in Oklahoma, because he doesn't live in Oklahoma, you don't have, at this point in time, jurisdiction over him. And they dismissed the case. All right. Now, some people would say the court erred here, and that because it was posted to the web generally, the World Wide Web, that there would be jurisdiction. But then those people on the other side say, but that's getting a little carried away, because where are we going to draw the lines? Are we going to let somebody who is sitting in India, China, France, sue someone, even though they're sitting in Chicago or New York or Poughkeepsie, New York or wherever? Where do we draw the line? And that's what the courts are trying to figure out right now. And it's a pretty messy situation. You know, we've talked about this previously. We've talked about the way in which eBay brings together buyer and sellers. The buyer might be in California. The seller might be in Missouri. Guy in Missouri is selling something. Guy in California says, oh, this is what I thought it was. I want to return it. Guy in Missouri says I can't. Well, the guy in California can't sue the guy in Missouri unless he goes to Missouri. That's the problem that exists. And that's the problem that exists and will continue to exist until this all gets sorted out. But it's very important because you need to realize that when you feel that you have a case against someone and that case is based upon what you saw on the internet, is based upon transactions that took place on the internet, you got to be pretty careful because the courts aren't always going to open their doors to you because you may have to go to that part of the country where that guy lives that you've got a beef with. Well, not maybe what you wanted to hear, but it's the way the law is right now. And we bring you the law as it exists so you better understand the law. And we do this every week. I'm David Allen.